you know, throw it open then to the commodities arena. Manisha Gupta, as always, joins in. Well, thank you for that. And I have a very special guest with me, Sachin Jain, as uh, India Head for World Gold Council. Sachin, thank you so much for joining us. And it is a time when most of the tangible commodities really seem to be doing well. So whether it's energy or base metals and especially precious metals as well, if you look at the geopolitics kind of uh, global uh, trend data in sense of debt that we have, which is near record highs, and of course, expectation of another rate cut coming in in the month of November. But even with all of this, uh, we haven't seen a yet another leg up in sense of rally. I mean, I do get a point that it is nearly $600 up from the lows of this year. But how are you reading the global markets and what's your sense on the gold? Uh, thanks, Manisha. Thanks for getting me on. And as you said, you know, it's it's kind of a dichotomy that we are sitting on in terms of where the prices of commodities are heading and, of course, the precious commodities as well. Um, if you reflect just in the last three weeks, uh, the first increase, of course, was an outcome of the Fed cut, how the US dollar weakened. And, and of course, gold becomes more interesting for the whole investor community. Um, that compounded by the current geopolitics hasn't seen that much up, as you said. But I think a large part of all these, uh, perhaps, you know, these, these triggers were already incorporated in the way prices of gold are today. So we have to really be very carefully watching out the price of, of what's happening in the geopolitics situation. And, and I think that uh, the large, large jumps that were based on any logic and based on reasoning and based on uh, statistics have been very well incorporated already in the current pricing that you see. Hmm. Sachin, uh, we've been talking to a lot of jewelers as uh, you would have been doing as well and they tell us that while August was good, September must have seen a 10 to 12 percent of a decline in sense of sales and if the prices continue where they are and if move any higher from here, then the Diwali quarter isn't going to be so strong. Well, I think it's it's something that we've seen, uh, you know, year on year, and I would say through a decade, uh, Manisha, where uh, when whenever the prices of gold have gone up, consumers tend to sort of slow down, watch it, and then get used to a certain price. We saw it. I mean, this year, 2024, has been uh, a record year, as you say. We've seen 30 price, you know, highest highs ever, 30 of them this year. Now, if you if you do a bit of analysis of these 30, you know, most of them have been similar where price went up, consumers get warmed up to that price and they come back. Now, of course, it's going to impact because if for an X price point, you could only get, uh, you know, a certain jewelry. Yes, that's the, I mean, the household incomes haven't gone up in that fashion. The only, I think, uh, I would say the, the sublime factor that we have to keep in mind is there are prices of gold in July were at a certain level. With the custom duty, it went down. And with the increase of gold price, it's going to be at the same level. So I think I think Indian consumers are quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think inclined towards gold purchases. There's, there's of course, a, a great love for gold. And in the current pretext of how gold has performed financially, I believe that consumers will come back. Yes, September has been a slow month. And for the right reasons of, you know, same uh, economic and same sort of uh, uh, always response from the consumers that when prices go up, you know, they, they tend to be a bit of hold. Hmm. Uh, going forward from here, and I do understand that World Gold Council has been doing a lot of gold campaigns across the country. What is the kind of feedback partnerships that you are looking at during this festival season inside? I think I think the, the interest of gold is an all-time high, Manisha, for all right reasons. I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, diversification of, of your portfolio, the interest of ETFs uh, on one side of the financial markets. And also, if you look at the jewelry side, the consumption, uh, you know, the inclination of consumers coming into the stores will be very, very high. The market is getting ready. We've seen in the last two months, right from IHS onwards, and recently there was a GJC show, we've seen that the, the industry from a jewelry perspective is getting ready. I'm, I'm very certain that the consumers will, will be witnessing some great creativity and some really amazing products on the floor. But I think also on the other side, the financial markets in India are doing really well. And mm. gold is really uh, has been has been a you know a glittering factor in that area as well. So I think I think for the balance of the calendar year of 2024, we're pretty positive as to how gold should be rallying out in the next uh, three months, four months. Hmm. Also, Sachin, there are various reports suggesting that the way the gold prices have been rising, the budgets have been as much. So you might see a decline in va volume rather than value, which continues to be higher. But also on how gold really soon seems to be becoming a more of an investment product rather than jewelry. Uh, how are you looking at those numbers? Well, actually, Manisha, if you look at the Indian context, this this change of pretext of whether gold is a you know investment product has you know it's been a part of our of, of our culture of our veins through ever. Now, there there are more there are more financial products that are you know of course uh, you know getting more popular, 
And I, I only see one direction of travel, that is the younger consumers getting more and more interested in gold as a financial product. But I think I think if you look at India in a overall uh, as an overall uh, market, then you have to keep in mind that 70% of our market consumption happens in rural markets. We've come out with a very positive monsoon. Those are things that are underlying factors which we have to look at. And, and they all have always, I mean, historically and even today, connect to the, the consumption of gold. So, you know, I think investment and jewelry tends to be a bit of confluence in a in a large part of india i mean you look at the the uh, the gold loan market which primarily runs on jewelry so it's a financial sort of an asset that you can leverage and on the urban side we certainly are seeing much increase in the financial products so i think both are here to exist both are here to stay but i think in the coming years you'll see more technological sort of uh, products going in even i think that both these industries would confluence together and be almost similar all right, interesting conversation there out uh, on gold, which is the only metal which is closer to an all-time high in a time when the markets are seeing a bit of a decline. So what we'll do is we'll take a short break, come back at you more on other side of uh, the equity markets, which is basically all the frontline indices and individual stocks. Uh, wrap up on Halftime Report, Business Lunch takes all the market action ahead. <laughs> 